taking the Livingston game out of the equation, you look like you've been enjoying your football over the last couple of weeks, is this the case? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we've had a good start, some good results. Um, obviously a good result, you know, for the Thursday night as well. Disappointing yesterday, but, um, you know, in the main it's been a good start and, and obviously it's important just to try and look at the positives. You know, obviously you learn from the defeats and, you know, that sort of spurs you on to, to keep going and, and doing well. So, you know, we just need to take that um, and, you know, be positive and take it forward and, and obviously try and continue the good run. So, I said we're going to win the quadruple treble? <laughs> That's too early for that. Um, obviously, we just try and base it on every game as it comes in, in terms of trying to prepare properly. And, and when we go out, go out into the games, then we, we try and win them. So, um, you know, obviously, we know momentum's massive in football. And the more that you can get of that, then, you know, you've got a good chance of, of going on a decent run and, and doing something. So, it's just a bit of preparation stuff for us. That's probably been our key over the last few years. A lot is the mood around the camp at the moment. Yeah, it's been good. Um, obviously, everyone sort of arrived last night, this morning, and you know, places in good spirits as well. So um, it's always good. It's always positive to, to start the week off, and um, the boys trained well this morning. Um, so again, it's just looking forward to that Russia game. And as I said, we we now have to plan for um, probably that playoff in, in March, and it's everything's geared towards there. The attitude, the the system of the team, the players in the team, and, and trying to make a real positive message going towards that. And just how disappointing was that home performance against Russia, especially after going one up, and also given that we had such a good competitive record at home? Yeah, exactly. Um, obviously, we knew it was going to be a tough game going into the game, and, and as you said, probably the, the start in the game um, was was very good, and, and it gave us a good platform in the, in the game as well to try and get something. And then come the end of the 90 minutes, you know, you don't have any points, and um, it's obviously disappointing for how well we started the game and, and showed promise in the game as well. So, as I said, it's just trying to knit everything together and, as I say, get a system and, and get a set of players together that, um, you know, that want to give their best and, and try and get Scotland to a major tournament. What would you say Steve Clark's brought to the international setup? I think he's been very good. He's brought that organisation as well. You know, he's a, he's a top coach and a top manager, so he knows how to work. He knows how to work at intensity and, and you know, get the best out of the players. So. Obviously, we just need to we have that time to, to gel and him get his ideas across and the players obviously taking that on board and, and then implementing it in the games and in training. So, you know, obviously everyone's looking for a, a quick fix and, you know, looking for it to, to happen straight away. But, you know, the reality is it takes time in, in terms of trying to put that message across and then building a belief within the squad and the nation that we can actually go and do something. You've talked about the mental strength required to be a professional footballer and you seem to have it in abundance. Is this something that you've developed? Yeah, I think so. I think just um, with experience and, and obviously with age as well, then, you know, the more situations you're in, um, the more experience you have, then, you know, you start to relax a wee bit more and, and obviously you, you learn from the mistakes and, you know, the, the performances and you become a better player and, and obviously more experienced in, in that way. So. I think for me it's it's just something that I've learned, obviously playing at a big club like Celtic, the, the expectation there every week is, is massive and you know there's an expectation to win and to play well. Um, so I think just growing up with that and you know having to deal with that then it, it stands in good stead for you know all aspects of life as well. And who are you rooming with this week? Jamesy again, so I mean him and roomies again. It's always, a, it's always a nice room, there's some good chats going on in there. So he's a good roommate, is he? Ah, it's good. Um, to be fair, we seem to have a good balance. We, we, we sort of like the same things and, um, you know, just silly things like we, we go to bed at the same time and, you know, there's nobody up with their, their iPad and watching stuff. So um, I think we've got a good balance in there. You played at pretty much every uh, level possible at Scotland Youth level. Um, any standout memories from this time? Um, I think probably, you know, just obviously being younger and, you know, you want to play for Scotland, it's, it's your dream, it's, it's what you want to do as a young kid and, as you said, to be fortunate enough to play in every every age group on the way up then, you know, that's something that's really special as well, to, to do that and come through the right, the full journey all the way. Um, but I think just your main ones, like when you go up a level and then you make your debut for the, the 16s, 17s, 18s and, and then all the way up to first team, um, so obviously it doesn't get any better than, than making your first team debut, so I, I would say that one. And without dwelling on it too much, do you think your Scotland debut was probably a bit overdue? I think it's, um, you know, at the time, you know, probably more people were, were talking about it um, than usual. So you could maybe argue that, but at the same time, you know, the, the national team were doing really well. They had, you know, 
very good midfielders in there as well, playing at a real good level. So I think for me, it's always it was always a sort of case of trying to get in the squad to start with and then and then sort of build from there. But as I said, you know, when I was in the squad, the, the players that were playing were, were doing very well, and, and obviously Gordon and and his staff were doing really well at the time as well. So you know, you can't have any sort of bones about that. You just have to wait and try and get in when when you can. And I don't want to put any pressure on you, but John McGinn scored his first Scotland goal on his 16th appearance. You're currently on 15 caps, not got a goal yet. My mates are asking, should they put a fiver on you to score in your next game? Let's hope so. Um, hopefully that's a good omen, as you said, there with John. But yeah, I know that's, that's probably the only piece of the jigsaw that's missing for me just now is to you know to get a goal for Scotland. And then I think that's me pretty much scored in, in every competition and every every level that I, I could have done. So. Um, I think that's the next one for me, just to tick off the list, yeah. And talking of goals, is your cup final goal against Motherwell currently your favourite? I think in terms of strike and, and obviously in a cup final, then yeah, probably. Um, yeah, there's been a few good memories along the way. What type of central midfield role do you prefer? Do you prefer box to box, sit deeper, something else? I think probably the, the sort of box to box one um, is, is probably my, my favourite one in terms of you can do a bit of everything. And, you know, go and get the ball and start the game and then sort of join in at the right times. Um, you know, I think over the last probably 18 months I've been sort of more towards that in terms of the a bit more defensive duties and then trying to break forward um, at the right times and, and trying to go on the end of things. So I think that's something else in my game that I can keep getting better at as well, that sort of defensive stuff and then breaking from there. Um, so it's all just part of, you know, learning and, and learning the whole midfield position. You've said before that Messi is the best player you've played against, which is understandable. Um, who else have you came up against that you think, wow, he was pretty impressive? Yeah, um, he was a few boys in the, the PSG team as well. Neymar was was incredible the night. Um, we played them away from home as well, and um, he scored two basically identical goals. I think he went past four players and, and put it in the bottom corner, and then he did it again five minutes later. So I think just when you play at that level, um, you know, you watch these players playing at the real, real top level, and you just sometimes think, "Wow, well, how's he done that?" Or um, you know, things like that in the game that you just think, "Wow, um, it's just good. It's, it's good to learn. It's good to, to play against these players, and, and obviously try and develop your own game." But ultimately, that's where you want to judge yourself as at the, the highest level. And are you a man for swapping shirts post-match? And if so, anybody decent in the collection? Um, do you know, I'm not really one for that. Um, you know, always kind of prefer to, to keep them on tops. Um, you know, whenever I score for for Celtic or that, and then always sort of keep that top and, and put it away. Um, but I think, you know, probably more recently, I've started to think about maybe getting one or two just just to keep for the sort of memories side of it as well. So I think probably as I get older, then I'll I'll start to be looking for some some good strips. I believe I'm right in thinking you're pretty close with your family. Do you, after you play, have a debrief with any of your family members, or you just try to talk about anything but the game? No, um, you know, you're spot on there. I always I speak to my mum, um, you know, every single game after it. We, we sit there for an hour and a half after the night games, and you know, you're not getting home to half twelve, and we're just sitting up talking about the game. And um, you know, she's a real good like sort of sounding board for me after games, and you know, she's pretty, she's pretty honest as well in terms of like my performance, the team's performance. So it's always good to get a, a sort of an outside opinion on it, and you know, sometimes you you hear things you don't want to hear, but it's good for you in the long run as well. So. Um, yeah, I'd probably say she's the one that I most that I speak about it with. And how do you switch off from football once you, you play a big game? I think you just, you, as you say, just obviously come off the game and you know you try and you sort of relax away from it. But I just think in, in days off and stuff, you I just go for a coffee and you know, as I say, just try and talk about other things and you know, other things that are going on in your life. Or you know, you go and do something with your girlfriend or that. Then um, it just sort of takes the the edge off the. The football, which is is quite difficult, because you've got a game every three days. Then, you know that's that's your job. That's what you, you're paid to think about football and, and play football every every three days. So, um, sometimes every now and again, it's nice to just go for a wee coffee and and uh, you know just chat about something else. There was a quick fire Q and A in the last match program. One of the questions was your favourite food, and you am I really to believe that pasta is your favourite? Yeah, I think so. That's pretty much um, all I eat in terms of like just trying to get ready for the next games and, and things like that. As I touched on there, it's you're playing every three days, so you need to make sure your energy levels are there. And um, you know, it's probably the easiest thing that you can go and eat is you know a nice bowl of pasta or whatever. So I try and do that um, pretty much every second day or whatever. And have you got a go-to cheap meal? Surely it's not pasta. 
Uh, no, I like a Chinese, to be fair. If I'm going to have a, wee, a cheat night or that, then I'll, I'll go and get a Chinese. Good choice. Back to football. What are your thoughts on the, the two games coming up? I think it's important. Obviously, we touched on it there, but the, the playoff stuff and um, you know we need to start to, to look towards that and, and build a, a team and a squad and a mentality for for these two games. It's, it's probably going to be the best chance that we've got a, a qualifying. Um, so I think it's just about us trying to sort of change that narrative within you know the nation and everything else and and get a positivity behind the group. And, and obviously we've got a top manager as well now that. You know, you can really see the difference, the small details in the game, and and as I say, we need to get that belief together as a squad, you know, as a group of guys and as a nation as well. That you know, we can we can try and do something in these games in March, and and obviously these two games are, are vitally important to to sort of start that off and that transition towards it. And finally, just what would it mean to qualify for Euro 2020? Yeah, I think it would it would mean everything. You know, you, you speak about it, you know, probably weekly, you know, with your mates and and everyone else and. When you come away with Scotland, and you know you're just desperate to do so well for the country, it's it's been a long time coming. You know, there's been a few nearly moments in there as well, and you know I think as I touched on there, that wee bit of negativity that's that's sort of there, then you know you're just desperate because you're the you're the one that that can make the difference. Or you know we're a group of guys in here, at 25 people with, with the staff, everyone else that we can change it. So I think that's the first thing we've got a group of guys that want to change it. So. It's about then trying to put it in place and, and get that belief together and, as I say, a, a system and a set of players that can go and deliver and, you know, as I say, we're desperate to do it.